get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, anyone working with clients one-on-one, stop trading time for dollars and shift from a one-to-one client work to one-to-many. You can go to rise25.com, learn more, download the free dream product ladder, which is basically a business plan on one sheet of paper that helps you see gaps in untapped revenue potential. Uh, Companies like Disney, Apple, Sporting Industries all use versions of the product ladder. Check out rise25.com. Today, I am very excited. Uh, Hailing from Germany, we have Franz Jordan. He's the co-founder of Sellex, which is a powerful all-in-one tool that combines everything sellers need to be successful on Amazon, right? What what more can they ask for, Franz? Sellex evolved from Franz's first company, Marketplace Analytics, which is a German analytics company that was first of its kind to focus on Amazon SEO back in 2014. In the internet years, that's a long time, friends. You can manage and optimize your sponsored product campaigns entirely in Celex PPC Manager. Other features include a profit dashboard, keyword ranking optimizer, competitor monitoring, and much more. Companies like Bosch Appliances, Lego, and Brita are just some of the many companies that use Celex. Franz, thanks for joining me. Thanks for, for having me, Jeremy. I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be in the show. So when does the negative come into play and how should someone do that? Oh, that's uh, that, that, it's complicated to do it just, you know, verbally. Usually I have a I know I try and give you a challenge, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's not even my, my mother tongue. You know, this is uh, this is really challenging. I've seen your uh, but, part. Uh, I've seen your slides. It's really interesting, you know, because it's almost like a web of it's almost like a decision making document sort of sort of like what you're saying now which is if you have an auto then after you do the auto you take the ones that are working and you put them into manual and the manual you can do a separate broad and exact campaign right yes so just overall just for a second explain negative i think i don't know for me people explain it different ways so what is how how does the negative work and, and what is it in general um, so let's say, uh, so negative essentially means that uh, if you put a keyword to negative, mm-hmm. you don't want any of your ads to appear for this particular keyword, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so um, let's say that, you know, you have uh, a keyword as a dog house, right? Uh, so dog and house, right? So you could set dog house as, you know, those two terms to negative exact, which would mean you would not rank for the exact word dog house, right? But you could wor- ra- still appear for some sort of combination, right? So if yeah. you if you put it to negative exact, you exactly, you know, this is the exact term that you are kind of, um, you yeah. know, avoiding to rank for. Then you have another uh, one, which is negative broad. And there essentially, um, you know, if you put uh, dog to negative, you won't rank for dog house because dog house contains a dog, right? Mm. Uh, so broad essentially blocks you for more keywords. So, so from do all people keywords even that, use? Do people use broad for negative keywords? That seems like you're eliminating a lot of stuff. Yes, um, in, in some situations it might make sense to use broad, right? Mm. Uh, so if, for instance, um, you have a um, like, let's say, for so instance, say, like if you like you mentioned the dog house example, let's yeah. say you have a dog poop bag or something. Right. Yeah. And you don't want your poop bag to come up when someone searches <laughs> dog house because they're not looking yeah. for a poop bag or something. So you may put exact like dog house for that or something yes. like that. But what? I'm trying to think of an example of what, why someone wouldn't do a bro- or why they would do a broad negative keyword so le- le- let's assume you're selling a round dog house right um oh wait no, no, that's that's not uh no le- let's let's go different so let's assume you're selling an iphone case um that is made out of uh how is it called synthetic leather right 
um, then you don't want to rank for any combination that includes the, the term like real leather, for instance, right? Mm. Um, because, oh, well, leather is also, not, how, what's um, like or a plastic? Let's say you're selling something? a plastic. Yeah, let's say, oh, you, you, let's say you're selling a wooden iPhone case, right? Um, so you don't want to rank for any keyword that includes leather iPhone, right? So instead of what you could do is now you could block all the terms that include leather, right? iPhone case, leather, leather, iPhone case, blue iPhone case, leather, and so on. Or you just put leather into negative broad, which will then eliminate that you rank for any leather uh, iPhone cases, right? Got it. So this yeah. is an example where you would use broad, right? Just yeah. to make it simple, easier to... Yeah, and, and I guess people, if they see there's a keyword that they're getting just destroyed on, they're making no money but a lot of click-throughs, then they should probably put it into some kind of negative situation, I assume? Yes, well, you, so I mean, if you see that you're not selling, you have essentially like uh, uh, three options, right? First is you reduce your bid, right? To see that maybe if uh, at a lower bid, you still can generate sales that are profitable. Uh, the next step would be to pause it. Um, that means you're not ranking for it. Um, and then the, the last step would be to put it to negative. But putting it to negative, you know, really does make sense um, if you if you want to kind of block the entire kind of category, right? Mm -hmm. So the entire keyword. Yeah. Right? Um, and so, yeah. And so the, um, yeah, so the, you know, what, what, what we suggest how to use the search terms is essentially it's a, it's a bit complicated, but we essentially we suggest to, to put, because uh, um, eventually you have a situation where you have the same keyword in your broad ad group and your exact ad group, right? And so what would happen is that basically you would bid on the same keyword in both ad groups. Mm. And so, you, you know, in order to avoid this, we recommend to, you know, add a keyword to, to the broad ad group as broad and add it at the same time as negative exact in the broad campaign, right? So that you will only bid exactly on this term in the exact ad group. And in the broad ad group, you bid on all the other search terms that belong to this keyword, but are not exactly the one that you are bidding for, right? This is crazy. This yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, if anyone does not get this, just uh, stick to the earlier conversation. <laughs> but no, it's, <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. You really have to be in the campaign showing someone. It's, it's hard to, if, if you don't, can't visualize it like you can kind of visualize where everything is you almost need to follow along while you're doing it type of thing um yeah. but um and so the product campaign type you know auto manual the match type broad exact or even negative keyword and then the strategy yeah. talk a little about the strategies you know because you mentioned a few like there's profit there's impressions why would you want to do one over the other or what, what are those different strategies people will take with the uh, the so you know, to, to to keep it simple, essentially there are two strategies. So one strategy is to use sponsor products to generate more profit. Yeah. Um, so essentially, use it as an additional kind of sales channel. The other one is to increase your your units, so the the the, the units you sell, right? Um, hoping hmm. to increase your organic ranking by doing this, right? Hmm. Um, so if you want to increase your units, you don't care too much about the profit. Uh, in fact, most people are, you know, are aiming for a break-even kind of situations where they don't lose and don't, don't make money. Some people are even accepting a loss just to, you know, boost their That'll sales. That will push maybe the um, organic ranking or something. Exactly. So yeah. that's kind of the, you know, that's kind of the the, the strategy that most followed nowadays. Um, to be honest, I'm a bit skeptical that the impact is still as big as it is uh, so there, there it used to be very big this connection between organic and paid i think they kind of reduce it a little bit and so the the situation that i fear is that you know especially in the us because the us market is a bit more ahead you know compared to europe um is that sellers spend money like crazy on sponsored products and they always justify it with yes but it's gonna pay off increase the sell gonna, through. yeah exactly and it maybe um, rank them so, high in organic you know, the, and they'll sell more on the back like so that's like more that, of a long-term kind of play exactly so exactly. what do you think about um, that you think and, that's you know, this not is, as smart well i think that you know everyone is basing their strategy on the assumption that there is a connection between paid and organic right. and, and nobody has ever tested it and so um you know, I think what's going on in the U.S. market is the cl the click price, the you know, the CPCs are going through the roof. Uh, people pay multiple dollars for one click, um, and I think that you know people take huge losses uh, and accept huge losses because they believe it's going to push yeah. their organic ranking. And yeah. if it turns out that this is not true, then you know a lot of people would have a very um, a very you know loss making just, strategy without yeah. ever making a profit out of it. Right? Yeah, there's just a hole in the boat. There's water just leaking out. 
But that's a big is. assumption, I guess, right? Yeah, we're we're currently testing it. Uh, we're currently trying to figure out if there if there's some if there's a relation. Or not, so. Yeah. Yes. Any um, any word because, of it right now? I, I I can't tell. It would be uh -huh. it would be unreasonable for me to tell yeah, anything right now. Um, Franz, this has been fascinating. I really appreciate your time. I could probably talk to you for another few hours, but um, I know you have a bunch of you know uh, features to to get at. Um, <laughs> And I think yeah. I saw, so everyone should check out Celix.com. If you haven't realized from this conversation, the guy knows what he's talking about. And, and they have some really cool tools. And I know some, personally, I know some really big sellers that highly recommend Celix. So everyone should check out Celix, S-E-L-L-I-C-S.com. Check it out. I, mean, I think, I don't know why you do this, a little bit crazy maybe, but uh, you have a 14-day free trial. So, and there's no credit card yes, required do. on that. No, um, I think this is a European uh, kind of thing, right? I know in the US uh, it's a, it's a bit different, but uh, you know we just we, we feel very confident about the product. You know we don't feel like um, you know we need to trap people into you know uh, converting them automatically to paid customers. So you know I think we we have a very fair offering. Uh, it's good value for for money, and uh, so you know we want to encourage as many people as possible to try it. And then uh, you know if they if they like it, they can just become a customer. Now you guys run uh, something called Sonar Dash Tool Two. Is that that's yours, right? Yes, absolutely. So yeah. talk about that. So Sonar, um, so it's, it's sonar-tool.com, right? And uh, so Sonar is uh, a keyword re a keyword research tool. Uh, mm. So what we what we talked about before. Um, and so what's special about Sonar is that it's uh, completely free, um, even though it's very powerful. Um, yeah. So you know the alternative would be to pay like 30, 50 bucks per month just to use a, a tool like Sonar. Um, and so we you know we released Sonar pretty much pretty yeah. exactly a year ago. Out of talk about the of decision of that. Why why free? Because you could have obviously easily incorporated into the suite yes. of tools, but you didn't. Um, it, <laughs> um, so what, what was the situation? So the situation was that, yeah, a year ago, essentially, we came up with a plan to, to have this keyword uh, research feature. And so we just wanted to put it out on the market to kind of, you know, the, the key idea was to, to make Sona popular and by this, you know, increase the awareness for Celix. Um, and it, it worked very well for us. Um, and to be honest, uh, I think we've reached a point where we could just incorporate it and it would just be fine as well. Um, but, uh, you know, we don't like to take away value for from, from the users, you know. Yeah. Uh, even also when, you know, when we add new features, we always... You know, it's always free for the current users. You mm. know, we never make um, current users pay more for features that we add, you know, because, I don't know, it's just maybe it's... I don't know. But so there's a Chrome the, extension, though. You can put it in the Chrome. Yes. And oh, then, yeah. Right, right. 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 So there's a Chrome extension, and the Chrome extension is paid. Um, so that was oh, it is one paid. way. Yes. So the, okay. the, the Chrome extension is, is paid. Um, that was kind of, you know, uh, when we realized we had a lot of traffic on Sonar, you know, we didn't want to make a Sonar, uh, Sonar paid version. So we just said, yeah. hey, maybe we can offer a little extra. Um, so it's just 10 bucks a month. It's, yeah. it's not, it's I not mean, meaningful. But in my mind, you, I want it, if it's a really valuable tool, I want it to be sustainable for the business, right? And it's not yes. sustainable for the business unless you guys are charging. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean uh, maybe people it, want people is, something for free, but I also want... You know, you got to pay developers, you got to pay upkeep. And so I like actually, I'd rather pay for something because I know yeah. it's going to be maintained, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, if, if Sonar was a standalone product, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a successful company and we would have to shut it down. Right. Uh, but since it's kind of part of the of the Celix family in some way, you know, it is providing enough value by essentially, you know, bringing more attention to Celix. Uh, so we're kind of, you know, cross-funding it with the revenues we make yeah. in Celix. But you're right, on a standalone basis, Sonar is actually pretty expensive because there's a ton of updating and crawling that needs to happen. Uh, so if you just look at the numbers, you probably would shut it down. But overall, you know, we feel it's a, it's a good thing for the for the yeah. Amazon community. What's, you know, this your your products, again, like I did a lot of research at a time, highly recommended. They seem very, <laughs> uh, very good and people highly recommend them. What's the pushback you get and why people don't use it? Um, so I think um, the the drawback of having a very powerful solution is always that it's a bit complex to understand, mm. and uh, so um, the pushback we get uh, is that you know people people they you know they're a bit overwhelmed um, at mm. the beginning, so they log in, 
And you know, what you, do I do? The first screen you see is a is a cockpit, right? That just you know it pulls you all the data from your Seller Central account and shows you data in ways that yeah. you know you've never seen them before. Um, but it you know for someone who's not used to seeing some charts and some data, he might be like, oh, uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's a bit right. So um, I think uh, where where we need to improve as a as a company is to you know help um, you know more handholding as people go through the process of you know. You know, they, they, they just started selling on, on, on Amazon. So, you know, the entire Amazon world is new to them. Now they have another tool and everything, you know, just you know, do some more handholding and, and really make sure that people understand how to use, how to use Celix, how to be yeah. successful on Amazon. You know, it's, it's not so limited to Celix. Just help sellers be successful on Amazon. That's essentially our, yeah. our mission. Yeah. Franz, I really appreciate your time. Everyone should <laughs> check out Celix.com. And uh, I want to be the first one to thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry, for having me again, and then uh, talk to you next time. Bye bye. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.